Hello there, I'm Gary. Welcome to my channel and welcome back if you've been here before. Today is build day of the kit of the week and the kit this week is, of course, the FM2 Wildcat from Armour Hobby in 1 72nd scale. Now, if you're thinking of buying one of these, you might also want to check out the box opening video that's already available. If you've got one of these and you want to know how to put it together, then this is the video for you. Or you could wait until another day or so and then check out the channel and look for the combo video that will have the box opening, the build, and of course, some bonus historical material. Now, if you like the video, and I really hope you do, then please do remember to say so by clicking the like button. And also, if you haven't done so, please, please do remember to subscribe to the channel. You do that by clicking that small button down there in the bottom right corner. If you would like to support me with some more concrete means, then you can do that through the super thanks button down here. You can do it through Patreon, buy me a coffee, or indeed through buying stuff on the Gary Stuff merchandise store. Links to all of those are in the information box below. Let's get on then and see how I built my Wildcat in 172nd scale from Armour Hobby. Starting with the seat, and there's some photo etch to go in. I use a grease pencil to pick up the smaller pieces like this seat pan and place them on a dab of super glue. Next I'll attach the seat belts, super glue again here, one on each side and these shoulder straps on top. When they're set I can push them into place. Once more a dab of super glue will hold them. I'm using the photo etch instrument panel so I've got to sand off the raised plastic here. Then I can drop the new panel into place. Now I use a high viscosity super glue for this as it gives me a few moments to check the placement before pressing down to set. Back to the seat and I'm going to paint the straps. Now the instructions suggest you can drape the supplied decals over them but I'm not confident that will work out well. Anyway, I prefer this colour. Then I can add a few dabs of steel for the buckles. The instrument panel is black at the top with sides in the US interior green of the cockpit. The seat support is green with a black headrest painted in. The completed seat just slots into place. On the instrument panel I use some decal setting solution then place the instrument decals. They look really good. Then this box, maybe fuses, sits on the instrument panel frame. Then the rudder bar assembly goes on the back. To assemble the cockpit hub, I've painted and added a wash to the base. The instrument panel goes into the front and the seat support goes into the back then the control column can sit in place. There are some small side panels as well. Each has photo etch to be fitted and painted as well as some more decals. When they're complete, the side panels can go in between the two frames of the cockpit. And when they're all together, the cockpit actually looks pretty good, especially for this scale. So the next piece to prepare is the forward bulkhead. This is painted in the lower surface colour, here Skype Type S, and a detail wash applied. You can probably guess the scheme I've gone for now. Onto this bulkhead go the gear chains for the undercarriage. It may be controversial, but you might not want to care about this, as you'll be hard pressed to see them later. If you do it though, it does look good out here in the open. This bulkhead is the first thing to go into the fuselage half. It's very easy to locate. Then the cockpit tub goes in neatly behind. We need to add parts of the main gear too. These two frames meet up inside the bay. And when those are in place, the fuselage halves can go together. Now, I found the fit a little tight, but it wasn't too bad with a bit of fiddling around. Now, 
tape and clamps keep it together while it sets. Now while that's drying, I'll assemble the engine. First the cylinders go onto the rear firewall. Then there's this ring of, I'm guessing, maybe connecting rods. On mine, one of them was missing, so I added a little bit of round stock to replace it. When it's all painted over, you never know. There are these filters for the air inlets that come with the photo etch sheet, four in total. Then there's this loom to go in on each side. I glued the centre into place first before messing around, trying to get the leads into the right places. It's a faff to get it just right. The engine cover comes in two halves and there is the engine fairing at the front, which holds it all in place very neatly. Onto the wings now, and if you're fitting rockets to the aircraft, you need to drill out the mounting holes. I'm using a 0.8mm drill bit here. Then the wing halves can go together. These are a very good fit indeed. Next the engine can go onto the nose, the bulkhead just slips into place, and the engine cover goes on top of that. Again, it's all quite a good fit. Now the wings just slot into place. You might need to clean up the tabs if you've used primer first, like I did, but the fit is good and the dihedral of the wing sits quite naturally. There was only a really small gap to fill in later. The one-piece tailplane, or horizontal stabiliser, slides into place, followed by the elevator. Then the rudder goes on the back and locks everything in place. And that essentially is the main part of the build done. So I can start painting and I've primed the aircraft first in light grey, then I'm applying Sky Type S on the underside. And while that's drying, I'll mask off the canopy. The pre-cut parts are easy to locate. I cover the inside of the canopy with tape, then blue tack to hold it in place. When they're masked, I give the transparency some black first as an interior colour. And while I've got the black out, I'll also prime the propeller. Now when the sky coat is dry and it's been given a light satin varnish, I can mask off the underside and spray on some dark slate grey to the top. And while that's drying, I'll paint things like the wheels using tyre black. Now these gear struts need some cleaning. I'm going to use a flat toothpick that's got a bit of sandpaper on it for most of it and I'll trim the rest with a very sharp fresh blade. Then with these slate grey dry I can mask off the camouflage pattern and spray the rest with extra dark sea grey. I'll also spray the canopy in EDSG as that's where they appear on the scheme. And then when all the paint is dry and I've given everything a final satin coat of varnish, I'll make a start on the decals. After that, I'll put in the gun sight. I could have done it earlier, but I do have a history of breaking tiny pieces off. When it's dry, I'll paint it and the panel in front in black. So now, the bit I've been putting off, the undercarriage. We start by placing this lower gear member onto the keel piece. It comes flat, so you have to gently bend it to the correct angle. Refer to the instructions for this. For the remaining cross pieces, I found it easiest to put them together first and then let them dry. And while that, all that's setting, I can take the masks off the canopy. Now be really careful with this. I just like to pick the very corner with the tip of the blade, but always putting away from the plastic. Back to the gear and the cross pieces can go onto that keel piece now. When it's correct, the top and bottom arms are parallel and all the mountings are in line. Then the gear legs themselves can go on. There are three mounting points that need to match up on each main leg. As you can see, it didn't work out like that for me, but the assembly looks okay and it's sturdy enough, so I'm leaving it alone. Then the gear assembly goes into the bay. 
can see I've been busy weathering in the downtime. The keel slots into place and the gear legs connect with those pegs, the ones we attached the chains to on the bulkhead earlier. And when you're happy with all of that, you can attach the gear doors and then this rear fairing. I'll weather that as well in a minute. The tailwheel slots easily into place, easily as anything fortunately. Then when the gear has set properly, you can add the wheels, making sure the flat spot is in the right place. And while those are drying, you can add the pitot tube to the underside of the wing. And now back to the propeller for a moment and I'll add a little bit of aluminium paint to the leading edges of the blades first and then let those dry. When the wheels are secure you can add the radio mask onto the spine and fix the windshield. I used a tiny drop of ultra thin cement for this as the fit is extremely good. Now the open canopy doesn't sit naturally so I've used a dab of super glue and I'm pressing the part down into place. That's a real pity they didn't supply two versions of the canopy as they do in their Hurricanes. The propeller now gets a final black coat over the blades and when that's dry there are decals that go on, technical stencils and the manufacturer's badge. And then I paint in the tips, white as an undercoat and yellow on top. Finally, I'll just scuff the leading edge of the prop blades with sandpaper to reveal bits of the aluminium underneath. The propeller goes into place and my Wildcat is complete. Yes, it's a lovely kit of the Wildcat, or here the Martlet, and most of the time the fit is good and the parts seem crisp and require very little attention. The undercarriage is really fiddly. There really must be a better design solution for this. It is a pity there's no wing fold option as it was such an integral part of the design of the Wildcat. The cockpit detail is good and with the photo etch and decals is excellent. Would I buy this again over the Airfix? Well, for the interior detail, absolutely. For ease of construction and the wing fold option, then no, I wouldn't. So there we have it then, the Wildcat. So uh, if you enjoyed the show, please do remember to say so by giving the thumbs up below and if you haven't done so already please do remember to subscribe to the channel you can do that by clicking this small logo down there in the bottom right doesn't cost you a penny helps me enormously in any case thank you so much for watching and i will see you next time mm -hmm.